Welcome back to Let's Play Skyward Sword. Now, in the thread and on YouTube, I've been getting some comments that uh, apparently it's not pronounced Fi, it's pronounced Fi. I just want to say, I don't like this character. I kind of get the feeling Fi is basically that surcharge you get when you go into a new phone bill. She is the hidden Fi, so I think the name's appropriate. I'm going to keep calling her Fi. Sounds good to me. Uh, uh, oh. Hello there. And someone mysterious. By the way, for this video, you're going to see um, the skip off in the corner. I had to re-record bits of this. That pops up when you've played through something and you're going back through it again. Makes going through the new game plus very nice, uh, but it doesn't show up for any other cutscene, which is too bad. So, Fee basically just interrupted you to say, let's keep doing what we're doing. What is the point? Exactly. Welcome to Skyward Sword, EBM. <laughs> Speaking of which, my guests today are EBM. Hello. And Redundant. Hi. Oh. Bit more dousing, just... This will be the first time the two of us have been allowed in a dungeon video. <laughs> yeah. I thought this section would be a lot longer, but it turns out... Like, this bit takes about ten minutes, and the dungeon itself is about half an hour, so... It's pretty quick. Oh, over here, we got some hornets. I guess with it being the first dungeon, it can be short. That's not a problem. The larva. Yeah, you can pick up the larva. You'd think it'd be celebrating the honeycomb, but no, it's the bee, the bee babies. We use all of these to upgrade our weapons and uh, some other stuff we pick up. Well, I'd love to know how that works. How do bugs make your sword better? We don't use it on the sword, but we use it on things like our shield. Oh. You'll see you later. There's a guy in the bazaar. Oh. To be fair, since you can fix your shield by drinking a potion, rubbing a bit of bug juice on it makes perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very good point. Actually, the bugs themselves, we do technically eat. We use them to infuse potions. Right, I remember that. <laughs> Just one little hornet. <laughs> Not the bees, uh... I wondered if we were going to make it through this section without that happening. <laughs> we did. <laughs> oh, well. If it wasn't you, it would have been me. <laughs> <laughs> Someone had to say it. it really didn't. <laughs> You know, everyone talks about the slingshot being useless. I get a little bit of use out of it, because it does stun enemies. And uh, that didn't work out how I hoped. Allow you to jump over them. <laughs> that was super effective, though, so it all balances <laughs> out. Isn't that like the second time in, like, in consecutive videos? I think so. It's not a problem. Everything ends up dead, so success. <laughs> Gotta kill everything. Occasionally it's me, it's just, you know. Well, you're the guy who blows yourself up all the time and is the biggest threat to yourself in a Bomberman game, so, I mean, par for the course. I think as far as I've gone recording, I don't think I've blown myself up yet in this game. Are these tightrope walking parts as frustrating as they appear to be? <laughs> Not too much. It is pretty finicky, though. It's not so much just balancing it as kind of like flicking it off to the side to correct yourself. Uh, it's like, um, even with the six axis PS3 stuff, I'm very bad at balance. Also, I just pressed the wrong button there, that's all that happened. Oh. It didn't even take any health off you, it seems. No, when you fall, you don't take damage in this game. Okay. Huh. Well then, what's the point? Yeah, <laughs> the least worthwhile trap to have ever. <laughs> Showing what those things do. Oh. So, I'm going to take a wild stab that the boss of this dungeon is going to require you to do all sorts of, like, precision 
things with the Wiimote. Oh. <laughs> Pretty much. Taking a nap. Also, that's what chairs do. Although I wasn't hurt, so... Uh, when you're hurt, you can just sit down on a chair and slowly heal yourself. That's a nice little bonus. Are seats common or quite rare? Uh, fairly common. And I almost missed that. <laughs> At the end of the day, you'd have just come back on a ledge without any loss of health. <laughs> the least intimidating bottomless pit in the world. You don't take fall damage unless the whole point of Skyloft and the surface being so hard to reach people. Oh, that's why they're not afraid to f throw themselves off things. <laughs> it doesn't hurt. Well, they're like, they're like surrounded by knights who are supposed to catch them. I guess that's true, but... I, well, I guess that does make sense from a gameplay story standpoint. I guess if... If, if they don't uh, take any damage, there's no reason to really be afraid of anything. They can't travel with it, but it doesn't hurt. Summon forth the light. Gee, I wonder what you have to do here. Oh, you could actually say no for a change. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to variations of yes. <laughs> cool. Okay. Yeah, Gorko here is introducing us to the goddess cubes. What we do is we ready a skyward strike. Swing it. And that will fly up into the sky and will activate a chest somewhere up in Skyloft. By which we can then go up, open it, and get a treasure. Oh, so they're sort of like those uh, those things in Phantom Hourglass and Wind Waker when you'd trigger something and it would cause a treasure to appear somewhere. Uh, treasure maps? Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. That's a really inefficient security system, though, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, if only one guy can get into them, I'd say it's pretty efficient. <laughs> That's true. Not for the one guy who owns the treasure, though. I've got to go to the surface, point at a box, now I'll go back into the <laughs> sky again. Oh, <laughs> I only wanted my rupees. And I know I jumped right past that one. I get it on the way back. Which is in the same video, don't worry. <laughs> Alright. It's a temply looking temple. Yep. You sure you want to proceed? No. <laughs> I'm going home. Screw this. I wonder what she's going to tell me. Something I already knew, of course. It's, it's one thing to be like, hey, listen, or watch out. This is just, it's constant interruption and hand-holding. It's like, it feels so condescending, almost. It's like Nintendo is basically saying, hey, you're not smart enough to play this game, despite this franchise being incredibly old. Dude, I'm pretty much near the final dungeon, as far as how I've recorded the footage. She's still like that, all the way through. Oh my god. Uh, I thought maybe she was just a little bit front-loaded, and as you got on, she'd go away a bit, but no. No. Worst part is, when you get to the really convoluted stuff, she doesn't tell you shit. I knew it. <laughs> and that was really dramatic music for walking downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Into a not particularly intimidating looking place. I mean, it's got these glowing mushrooms, it's actually kind of pretty. Yeah. I kind of like this temple, yeah. Spooky music, but it's pretty looking. <laughs> I have bad news, you can't use the thing you never used. <laughs> For some reason, I'm still reading her dialogue, and I just don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Which reminds me, we did get requests to uh, uh, speak to her as, like, um, the Terminator. Oh, of course. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> spider web. Yeah, there are spiders in this. Well, I guess that's better than them than just being burn them walls. <laughs> Though I bet that'd get really annoying after a while. I learned much later, you can just roll oh. right through them, break them immediately. Oh. I like how you cleared a, a perfect little path and then hit the one strand. <laughs> <laughs> <that's left. laughs> that happens all the time. <laughs> So, 
Not a stun that thing so it doesn't ambush you the second you get up, huh? Yeah. Camera angle! <laughs> <laughs> Since the advent of the 3D console, there is yet to be an acceptable camera. <laughs> I really like the aesthetic here, I gotta say. It is very nicely designed. <laughs> that stone literally said, listen to Fee. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> or do what you know how to do. Make the eye dizzy. It's like those Mr. Eye enemies from Mario? I guess so. Oh, that you have to run around, yeah. There's that thing. Can't get to it. Don't care. Well, I was going to assume it was like a Skyward Strike thing. I wouldn't think so. If that's a common thing for like, having your eye burst out for looking in the circle, I'm a lot more concerned about my next <laughs> optometry visit. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of air getting blown at your eye, you get just like a, a very pointy object start spinning around you're like, ah, ah, and then your eye just explodes. Just drops out, the door opens. <laughs> See you next year. <laughs> the test was a success. You have eyes. Wow. Had eyes anyway. <laughs> That's all we expected of you. <laughs> Here we are introduced to this game's version of the Skultula. Takes me forever to fight them. Uh, what you have to do is you have to hit them to spin them around to expose their underbelly, and then you have to stab it. But since they're constantly moving, it's kind of hard to get a hit in. <laughs> yeah, they, they seem like a step up, though, from the the old style, old style Skultulas there. Nice bit of variety. Yeah, and they do actually look like tarantulas rather than like black widows or that sort of thing. Yeah, they do. Though I gotta say, I'm not liking the, uh, I'm not liking the design. Like, what I'm seeing is, this is a lot, this is reminding me a lot of, of all games, Metroid Fusion. Because it's basically like telling you, okay, do, it's basically holding your hand at every point. There's signs telling you what to do in a room, there's fee. There's signs telling you to listen to Fee. It's like, let the player play the game. No, I agree. Also, there's a little patch in the ground. Not going to be able to touch anything like that until the uh, next area. Do you get a shovel? <laughs> Something like it. Oh, I really hope it's something ridiculous now. It's not too ridiculous. I think it's a send-up of some items we've gotten in, like, um, some of the 2D games. Like, I think Minish Cap. Okay. Oh, I'm fine with throwbacks and callbacks to other games. This game is loaded with them. It ought to be. It's the, like, what, 25th anniversary game? <laughs> yeah. I am fairly certain I'll understand about the half at best. <laughs> I could barely, like, I don't even notice them some of the time. <laughs> yeah. You can do that with the mushrooms. I show up the revitalizing potion. Turns out you don't drink it, you just splash it on the shield. Which makes sense. It's like tar or something, basically. Yeah. And I'm, I'm picking up these mushroom spores. I don't know what they do, but we do use them for a uh, side quest in the next video, I think. Okay. If you can steal their regenerative powers, you'll end up becoming the world's greatest hero. The most effective defense mechanism ever. Just instantly repair yourself. <laughs> you say that as I miss the vine. <laughs> it was only a fall, though. There was no danger. <laughs> it wasn't even a bottomless void. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Sad thing is, if it was a bottomless void, it would be less of a danger. <laughs> if it was just a really high fall, I'd take the damage. <laughs> you are screwed. Ah, oh, flanking maneuvers on the spiders. Rude. 
he just kind of takes it. Well, okay, you're behind me now. I can't really do anything about it. Reason we did that so that we could get to this switch, which raises the water level again, which will then uh, raise a log up so that we can jump onto it over to a locked door. That also means we still need to get the key. So the first dungeon of this game is the water temple. <laughs> For just this room. Okay. Thinking about it, I don't think this game has like a properly annoying water dungeon. There's one that uses water a fair bit, but that's probably my favorite dungeon in the game. That's, Maybe that's in cool. the 25 years they've learned how to make a good water dungeon. <laughs> I'm trying to remember if I liked Great Bay Temple. I did not. I probably didn't, but like it's Mentora's Mask, so I forgive it anyway. I'm just trying to recall it well enough to form an opinion on him. <laughs> it's the switches and pipes thing where you just sort of... You, it's like you're trying to adjust currents, basically. Oh, that one. It had a few clever dynamics. Still not sure I'd really like. <laughs> yeah, probably not. It's like managing a water roller coaster. <laughs> and very neat thing. The map in this game replaces the compass as well. The map shows all of the chests, where we need to go. And like unlike Fee just coming up and saying, hey, go to this room, it gives us a pointer and just says, something you need to do is over here. And I like that better than just Fee showing up and saying, this way. Yeah, magically knowing. Makes sense that the map would have these things on it. Also means I don't, like there's one less ch big chest that just has something in it that's useless. Just put them together and let you go. Well, yeah, because the compass was always a fairly pointless acquisition, really. It's seemed unnecessary. They did things differently back in the day. <laughs> I still question why the compass would let you see what door you used to come into the room. I question the compass for a lot of things. <laughs> or why the compass works in different places different ways. Yeah. <laughs> Although to be fair, when I'm trying to find where I've left stuff, I often go to my compass for the answers. <laughs> 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 like someone at Nintendo mistook compass for GPS. Is that the only way those spiders are a legitimate threat, is if you swing them into you? <laughs> yeah. Here's a good example of how my Wii Remote cannot stay calibrated. The speed this Oh up. lord. <laughs> <laughs> Finally getting it, there we go. One of the downsides of this game, it uses uh, Wii Motion Plus, which does not make use of the um, infrared sensor, which means it can get out of uh, calibration incredibly easy. There are times where I've started like facing 45 degrees away from my computer and it just magically found its way facing at the computer. <laughs> uh, that's <laughs> pretty ridiculous. Yeah. I've never used the Motion Plus before. He always seemed like something quite exciting, but... <laughs> Maybe not. It's, it's cool for the precision and everything, but it gets out of sync so easily that it becomes a hassle. That's a pretty standard thing with the Wii. Cool, but it's a hassle. <laughs> and Just like in general, you're playing against the controls at some points. That was cool. I already looked at that. It's a giant decanter. I was expecting an enemy or a boss or something, but no, it was just pointing out the switch you'd already stared at. <laughs> Look at our pretty room we made. Well, it is pretty. Mini, Mini boss. boss time. It is a Stealthos. Got some sweet music, too. If I know anything about Stealthos, then I'm 
out based on the optometry thing. Just wave your sword around. His eyes will burst out. Victory. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's actually pretty easily, it's just I'm doing it really badly. <laughs> what you need to do is you kind of need to guide your sword so that like, you can see on Link's model where it is, and then swing it so that it's, it gets in between his two swords. And that seems to be a recurring thing. He ba he's basically just a tougher uh, Bokoblin. Yeah, it's, do, do all the enemies basically have a I'm guarding vertically or horizontally slice through my guard. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, and just about every enemy also has an attack that you can block back with the shield. What the? And here we get the dungeon item. This is the beetle. This uh, this can fly around. We can guide it. It can cut strings, uh, hit switches, and also grab things like rupees and hearts and treasures. So it's a fantasy toy helicopter. Yeah. And, and it controls about as well as that. <laughs> Great. This thing cannot turn on a dime. Just watch this. I'm having a hassle just recentering the damn controller. Cuts through the thread. Does this fly like the um, the big bird thing? Your loft wing. There we go. <laughs> it's um, it's much tighter and harder to control, but it operates on that principle. Yeah. Okay. It also can't fly forever. If it hits a wall, like, dead on, it'll come back to you, and after a while, it'll just start uh, flashing red and then come back to you anyway. Is there a way to abort it mid-flight? Like, just say no, because I imagine that ditching Link and having yeah. him just standing there is probably a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, you can just press B and it'll abort. All right. After a bit of dicking around and not finding anything... <laughs> I cannot fight these fuckers. <laughs> you made the, the the big skeleton thing look much simpler. I am forgetting my words today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, asshole. We can use these to cut the Degobabas off of the ceiling. If you can aim it. Turning. Turning. Strafing maneuver, strafing maneuver. Now be careful, I imagine those things fell into bottomless pits so they're perfectly fine. <laughs> 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 They'll be back before you know it. <laughs> no, I think as soon as you s uh, severed them from the root, they're dead. <laughs> I see a floor down there. Oh, in that case they're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> they are good and dead. <laughs> going to do at least a couple of things in here. There's a switch hidden in one of these vents. Uh, we need to use the beetle to get it. But uh, first, there's a switch up here at the top in this little room. Use the beetle to fly up to it. Oh, you know what this thing reminds me of? Hmm? It's uh, it's a lot like the Visibomb gun, and Yoshi's going to be doing the uh, Ratchet and Clank series, so that's actually kind of appropriate. Oh yeah, yeah it is kind of like uh, pretty much anything that uses a guided rocket. But by hitting that switch, we get a use of heart. Always welcome. Looks like a cookie. <laughs> I think that's our first one in this uh, game. Yeah, I, thought, I think so too. I don't remember seeing it in any of the other videos. Hmm. <laughs> game mechanics. <laughs> For some reason, the spiders, like, just... Tying up boxes. <laughs> mine. This is mine. <laughs> I have to suspend this from the ceiling. It cannot be on the floor. <laughs> Spider feng shui. I <laughs> <laughs> guess so. Okay, I've got to wonder. How the hell do you use the beetle as the dungeon item for to fight a boss? Interesting you point that out. This is one of the few dungeon bosses that does not use the dungeon item. Oh, well, I assume so, because that seems like, considering it leaves Link completely immobile, that'd be an awkward boss fight. Oops, yeah, in I fact, <laughs> the boss 
is. <laughs> yeah, just hi, spider. I actually prefer the, the Sculptulas when they're on the ground, because then I can just do an upward attack, and they'll be on their backs, and I can just instant kill them. All right, let's see how long it takes for this one. Well, to get these two eyes... Well, there's actually three eyes. I need to drop this box down so that I can be in the right position where I'll, they'll, all three of them will see me. Oh. And that takes a little while, so... Because doing the one at a time is completely unfeasible. <laughs> oh, they fixed the climbing so well, but now you're just pushing blocks old school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is about the right position. Let's see if the calibration will work with me this time. Looks like it. Nope. Looks like it. Oh. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong button. There we go. I'm betting every pass just made a dizzy like 1% more. It just took forever to add up. It's just really boring partying for the game. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's bad. It's like self-inflicted, though. That reflects poorly on me. <laughs> yeah. That didn't work. What happened? What happens if you get attacked whilst you're using the beetle? Is that even possible? <laughs> I think you. Actually, I don't know. You either take damage, but it doesn't knock you out of the beetle, or it you're invincible. Can't remember. <laughs> okay. Wow, I would love to see, like, a speed run then, where someone pulls out the beetle on the final boss just to, like, trigger use the invincibility frames, if that were true. There's a challenge for the thread. <laughs> Get someone that isn't you. <laughs> just... <laughs> for, like, a year later, because the final <laughs> boss is going to take forever to get to at this rate. First time playing this, I was scared shitless of that spider. Because he just drops down and I didn't know you could knock him onto their back. Do all the other dungeons in this game like have this sort of level of detail? Because like there's stuff growing everywhere, there's like this just looks really great. Oh yeah, definitely. Like if the controls are kind of wonky, Nintendo knew what they were doing with the visual design. Definitely. Yeah, just the small details, like say the spider hanging the boxes. It all fits in with the general theme quite nicely. Makes it very surreal, and I like that. Which reminds me, I keep forgetting to point out, this game uses a, a, a visual filter, where the farther away the scenery is, the more it's made to look like an impressionist painting. So if you look off in the distance, it'll look blurry and kind of splotchy, but intentionally so. It looks quite cool. That's cool. That's cool. Instead of a fog effect, they go for an art artistic effect. I really like that. It's something to keep an eye out for when we're not in Corridor. <laughs> <laughs> what is that thing? Is there a three headed something? You kill this by making it dizzy. <laughs> yeah, you need to kill all three heads at the same time. And, uh, usually what, like, what it expects you to do is wait for them to line up properly. It'll usually be at some diagonal angle and then hit him again. But if they attack you, you can just punch him in the face with a shield and then they'll be stunned. And it's just an easy spin attack and they're gone. The shield seems to be your best weapon at the moment. <laughs> That's the only thing I can use properly. <laughs> I don't know. He said as he kicked the ass of a moblin, goblin, whatever the hell that thing is. Yeah, it was... Kind of like the reverse LP curse the second <laughs> I criticized game good. Just do that more often. I thought, I thought the LP <laughs> curse was horrible things happening to interrupt LPs. It goes both ways. It just does whatever. It's like this expanded Murphy's Law, basically. <laughs> Pretty much. Shit will happen everywhere. If something can go wrong, it will go wrong. And it will go wrong in the most catastrophic way possible. <laughs> Probably normally involving fire if it comes to computers. <laughs> there was a Dwarf Fortress thread where a guy's computer actually, like, set his bed on fire, I think, actually. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't laugh at that. That's really terrible, <laughs> but... Didn't happen to you. 
<laughs> yeah, pretty much. Schadenfreude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I meant to ask earlier, how do you deal with enemies on tightropes? Do you just shake the tightrope until they fall off? Yeah, that's it. I find it's a little easier if you lean off to the side and then drop down onto it. Because yeah, then you don't have to worry about balance anyway. And this is this game's version of a uh, boss door. It's not a conventional key. We need to find something that's shaped really bizarrely. And then once we found it, we go back, and then we have to actually turn it with the Wii remote so that it fits in properly. So it's like a Resident Evil emblem puzzle. Pretty much. It's it's interesting, though, because the shape of the key isn't obvious uh, in relation to the shape of the lock. You'll see what I mean as soon as we get it, because it's just right across from this chasm. Oh, so it's like one of those IQ tests where they have you like manipulate a spatial object, and it's just like you're trying to figure out what uh, con conversion of it equals what picture, or something like that. Yeah. Speaking of my cue, let's miss this. Am I gonna make this jump? I'm guessing not since you've pointed yeah. it Yeah, you've ruined the suspense, Thorn. <laughs> but don't worry, bottomless pits, you're fine. What's odd is that you actually flash red as if you were hurt, but you're not. Yeah. Ooh, that's <laughs> I had visions of you dropping to your doom again. <laughs> doom and in inverted commas, obviously. I wouldn't show that twice in a row. If it happened three times, yeah. <laughs> you got the abstract puzzle piece. And all of the um, little pieces that go into the boss key like, aren't called boss keys, they're called something that's usually in relation to the temple itself. Huh. And I see what you mean about the orientation of the key. It looks like it could go about four or five different ways, and obviously only one of them's gonna work. Exactly. Yeah. And it's never obvious which uh. one it is. And I think I've got the hang of it. Oh, oh, Never oh. mind. <laughs> one little rupee chest off to the side, and then we can go fight the boss. This should be interesting. Considering how much time is left in the video, this is going to be an interesting boss fight, I get the feeling. Looks like it. Oh dear. I almost had it. It was right there. Wasn't paying attention. <laughs> yeah, this is this is kind of hard when your uh, Wii mode is out of calibration as well. I imagine. Uh, uh, uh. Got it's it. Gotta turn it. There we go. There we go. Oh, and if you, you can use the patterns on the background to help line it up as well. I didn't notice that. Until I, oh, yeah. I didn't notice that either. Good eye. It doesn't always work. Some of them are, like, we'll have pieces that are inset. Uh, so really well, abstract shapes. I guess it makes sense that they just keep ramping up the difficulty with each key. Whoa! Solar Flare! Hey, it's... That guy. That guy from the trailers. Which I didn't watch, so... <laughs> huh. He is terrorizing that wall. Yeah, look who it is. Whoa, mascara! And, oh my god! Captain Makeup. <laughs> That's the most emo of emo fringes as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh... Don't laugh, he got dressed up just for you. <laughs> I'm speechless. This is Girahim. He's the main antagonist of the game. Oh my god. And he's awesome. Fuck you. I like this guy. I like his personality, but that, that face, that everything. <laughs> he's gorgeous. Back to not laughing myself sick. Uh, it seems that he has a diamond motif to contrast with Twilight Princess's uh, square motif. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, Girahim is a funny way to spell Ganondorf. You can notice this guy is very dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never would have guessed from his appearance. <laughs> 
Do you know how that makes me feel? Oh, oh my lord. <laughs> I disappeared from reality. <laughs> I hated when that happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's so inconvenient when you're at the lines or. Oh, whoa. Oh. And thus a thousand fanfics were written. You have no idea. Oh, the Lord! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sweet! It's like a noisemaker. <laughs> and that just doubled the amount of fan fictions that were written. <laughs> there, was fa there were fan fictions being written when the trailers were released. Oh, dear. Back when people oh, thought dear. this guy was a girl. Okay, so this is the first boss fight. <laughs> uh, it doesn't use the uh, dungeon item. All you do is sword play. He's just trying to poke you. The thing with Girahim is his hand follows you around, as you can see. What you need to do is kind of psych him out, like guide him, guide it around so that he doesn't know where it's coming from, and then attack him, and just keep going. Because if you make it obvious, he'll just grab your sword. Uh, in an earlier take, after doing it several times, he'll actually take the sword away from you. Oh. <laughs> and you're, you're pretty much helpless. Will he just stalk you and kill you now? <laughs> well, then he throws his sword back at me. But then I forget to <laughs> grab it because I don't know where it is. He's picking it up. Oh, Lord. <laughs> this guy is humiliating you. Yeah, the whole point of Girahim is for the newbie players, as soon as you fight this guy, waggling your sword around is not going to cut it anymore. You need to know what you're doing from now on. But back to the fight where I actually know what I'm doing. Fair enough. Uh, th this guy looks a lot better in the game than he does in the cutscenes. He seems like a lot bigger a badass. Now he's just blocking you with his fingers. <laughs> you were saying? <laughs> oh, well. It, it looks cool with the rapier. Yeah, it's, he seems like a badass. <laughs> so. so what does he do? He just throws knives at me. <laughs> this is his... Uh, charge attack. A couple backflips gets out of the way. If he hits you with that, he will send you flying. I like this guy. Is he going to be a recurring boss? He does show up again, yes. Good. In a dungeon, fittingly enough. <laughs> this honestly looks like a lot of fun. First time, it's painful. Because you don't know what you're doing. But once you get the hang of it, he's he's a pretty cool boss. This is what I, this is what I like. Like instead of like the game ha holding your hand, this is what I like to see. It's just trial by fire, learn or die. Still got feet on my ass though. I also say that my favorite boss, my favorite boss fights in the Zelda games tend to be like this. Just two people with swords, like the Dark Link fight that you have. Yeah. It's always quite enjoyable. I think that's those are everybody's favorite fights. It's like the fights between two similar opponents instead of guy versus giant monster. Yeah, I mean, the giant monster fights are cool, but seem less fun to play than these. I mean, this guy is pretty darn cool. I mean, being incredibly comp aside, he's, <laughs> he's cool. wearing diamond patterned spandex, but he's cool. He is pulling off the diamond patterned spandex better than most, though. <laughs> Credit where it's due. <laughs> to be fair, I think he was designed that way. Can't give him too much credit. <laughs> I'm gonna attack it when I'm nowhere near it. Well, <laughs> this guy's got a lot of HP. Yeah, he does. Just about finished with him now. Oh yeah. Loving the soundtrack too. Oh, I love gearing him. And each consecutive fight, it gets better. Soft boy. <laughs> You're one to talk with hair like that. Does he have a second ear? I can't see it. Maybe that's why he's got the fringe. 
And maybe had a bad trip to the optometrist as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did. If he can teleport like that, why didn't he just go to Skyloft and do everything that way? Oh, also, heart container, have one. <laughs> why not? Is it made of diamonds? Might as well be. It looks crystalline, so. Yeah. And she is still like, I've got something to say! <laughs> She's so clingy and needy. <laughs> what the? Oh, yeah, I thought Link was just standing there for no reason. Master, you no longer bang me against things. <laughs> yes, we got one in. <laughs> <laughs> There's one. It's almost like I completely forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get a chance. If he is gonna do something kind of strange in this next cutscene. Oh, good. <laughs> is she gonna give you useful information? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> Let's... Oh, re redundant, you silly boy. <laughs> redundant, you're so redundant. <laughs> Not more redundant than me, though. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I noticed that these crests you've been hitting are basically the Legend of Zelda symbol minus Triforce. Pretty much. And here's the point where I said, What the fuck, Fee? Take a look at this. <laughs> Allow me to translate for you. While doing ice skating. <laughs> She's a ballerina. It's it's Legend of Zelda on ice. Come with me if you want to skate. <laughs> <laughs> She's like Zant almost. First time playing through this, I just I don't think I even read the dialogue. It's just what the hell are you doing? I'm not. Are any of us reading the dialogue? I'm too busy face palming the thing. <laughs> she doesn't have arms, it's just this cape thing that's twirling around. This does explain why there aren't many translators for that language, though. It seems like quite an in-depth process. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll admit that it is kind of Lord of the rings -y to have a language of divinity being like song and dance. <laughs> though now I just want to, I think of Fia as like this per performance artist. I like the little expression she gave, it's like, Gah. <laughs> the Look what I did. Oh, oh, we didn't have enough of her. <laughs> oh, but I... Just... By the way, there's a goddess cube in this room, I just forgot to get it. Oh. <laughs> I have to come back for it later. <laughs> After that performance, I can't blame you for wanting to leave as fast as you possibly can. <laughs> oh, come on, if... Look, if the player isn't smart enough to figure out, hey, I should take this thing that's identical to what opened up the first column of light back to the temple, which clearly had room for more blocks... What the hell was that? Hey, it's Machi. I'm happy to see him again. He's cute. Cute and adorable. And yes, they were probably based on the kiwi birds. It's just, I was trying to think of what relation they had to other Zelda monsters. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure Darwinian Zelda evolution is a fascinating field. There's that goddess cube I missed. The first one. <laughs> is the treasure that these provide usually worthwhile, or is it just rupees normally? Uh, you usually get cool stuff. Mostly rupees, though. Well, there's plenty of stuff to actually buy with rupees in this game, so it'll be—it might actually be worth it. Huh? How about that? A currency that's useful. What a change from Zelda norms. Especially the previous game. It's only because everything is fucking expensive. <laughs> oh. Which—which which isn't a surprise, because they live up in the sky, where are the rupees coming from. <laughs> I guess with you having to buy new shields, money actually makes sense in this game now. Yeah. Because before, once you had your gear, that was it, you were done. 
you had your sword, your shield, you were the hero. <laughs> but no, now it makes more sense. You're the economic hero. <laughs> In the case of the shields and anything else that I can upgrade, uh, I'm going to try to upgrade all of them just to, so that I have something upgraded completely and I can show that off. Um, there's one shield that when fully upgraded you really don't need anything else. And then there's an even better shield later on. But I'll try and get everything. Um, the weird thing... I'm amazed money is even remotely a problem at any point. Like, you would have to go out farming or anything because money literally grows on trees in Skyloft. <laughs> I'm not joking. Half of the trees, you just roll into them and a blue ruby drops out. There's a currency deflation commentary to make there, but I am not versed enough in economics to say it. It makes you wonder how there could ever be poor people in Skyloft. <laughs> makes you wonder how there can be an economy in Skyloft. <laughs> a barter economy, perhaps? <laughs> just goods and resources? Well, everything's provided to them by the goddess. We should start using leaves as currency and emulate their system. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? There are many things that could go wrong, let's find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't actually try that. that was... 